What's up, Greg? Welcome back to another episode of Nightmare Fuel, the internet's favorite place to get scared and scarred. I hope you guys are all ready to wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat screaming, because this one is a doozy. So since I made that last video on a low budget movie, The Lamp, I've been going down a rabbit hole of sorts uh, looking for other low budget movies to talk about. I feel like low budget movies are like an endless source of inspiration for movies. There's just so many that are so bad. But I've recently discovered that an even better subgenre of movies exists within low budget movies that are low budget ripoff movies. There are like a bunch of low budget studios, like Sparkplug Entertainment is the one that made this movie. There's a bunch of others that make a living off of making rip-offs of popular movies. Everything about the movie, from like the title to the cover and the posters for the movie, and even the plots of the movie, are designed to trick you into watching their movie instead of a good movie, like Kung Fu Panda. One of the worst, most egregious examples of this that I've found is this movie called Plan B. It's a rip-off of the 2007 absolute classic, B-movie. Over the past couple years, the B-movie has seen this sort of resurgence because it's been like memed to death. But at the time it was released, I guess it was like a fairly well-received movie. At least it was received well enough to get the attention of Michael Shelp, who is the director of this movie. He's got classics like Spider's Web, A Pig's Tale, A Car's Life, Sparky's Big Adventure, Car's Life 2, Bug Bites, An Ant's Life, which is clearly a rip off of Finding Nemo. But today we're here to talk about Plan B. The worst movie ever. I feel pretty comfortable saying that. I know I've said that before, but I think I think we found it, guys. I think we found the worst movie ever. I think one of the most perfect things about this movie is the title, Plan B, because this movie would definitely not be anybody's first choice. Oh boy, what awesome flowers! Hey, you're like kidding, right? Daisies are so last century. What if someone sees me? Oh, Buffy, daisies are always in style. But if you prefer buttercups... The movie starts off by introducing some lovable characters. There are all these worker bees. There's Buffy and Bing. So right off the bat, you get a sense that, okay, everybody's name in this universe who's a bee is gonna start with a bee. Very funny. If you're like me, the first thing you'll notice about this movie is that the characters, the settings, just the animation, pretty much everything visual about this movie is just horrendous. It is acid to the eyes. In this whole beginning scene, these worker bees who are led by Bing, who's the main character, are just going around and pollinating flowers. Um, well, Bing is. The rest of them, for some reason, can't figure out how to pollinate flowers, even though they're bees. One of the bees is trying to eat the flowers. Another bee is trying to pollinate a pretzel. We're here to pollinate, Zoe. Keep snacking to a minimum. And immediately they've broken the whole bee scheme, where every bee's name starts with a bee, because they've just introduced this character, Zoe. Zoe? Who they refer to for the rest of the movie as Joe. Joey, no snacking. I don't know why none of these bees know how to pollinate flowers, except for Bing. Like, they're bees. That's probably the one thing they should know how to do. And it never says, like, this is their first time pollinating or anything like that. They're just dumbass bees, I guess. So they're flying around and trying to pollinate shit, and the animation is just so weird and creepy. Like, the way they pollinate things is by slamming their heads on it over and over really fast and sticking out these really long, creepy, cylindrical tongues and sucking really loudly. But if you thought the visuals of this movie were the only bad thing about it, then boy, are you sorely mistaken. Some of the characters in this movie have the most annoying voices ever. Gag me! Like, why can't humans throw trash away? Did you just say gag me? Ugh, oh, gag me! <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Listen to this character, Pistol, who just complains for the entire movie. Pistol, we won't make much. Honey? Oh, we'll make plenty. Not with this Motley crew, we won't. His voice is just, ah, uh, it's so gross. Oh, stop. This is the A-Team. What? All, like, all this character does for the entire movie is complain and make those, like, moaning noises. It's the most disturbing thing. Uh. You know, say what you want about the bee movie being weird, but at least they found a way to take something that would ordinarily be kind of creepy to most people, bees, and turn them into slightly endearing or at least personable characters. This movie feels like it went out of its way to make all of the bees creepy and gross. Like this one's so annoying and just complains all the time. One of them licks trash and eats all the flowers they're supposed to be pollinating. They all look horrifying. And when they get back to the hive to make honey out of all the nectar they got, they do this thing where they extend all their gross ass tubes out of their mouth and spit all the nectar into one giant bowl. Not to mention the way the bees stir the nectar into honey. 
which is with their butts. Not much nectar. God damn, that voice is so annoying. Well, at least there couldn't possibly be a more disturbing looking and sounding character, right? I want more <laughs> That is my sleep paralysis demon. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night, unable to move, and at the foot of my bed is that bee. Watch this. It's so funny. I can see that, but they're so little. The story of this movie is basically all these worker bees who are the heroes of the movie trying to deal with this new tyrannical queen who takes over after the old queen mysteriously disappears. This new queen basically enforces this new rule where you have to extract as much nectar as possible because she wants all the honey in the world and she wants to expand the hive and make her hive super big so she can have all the honey. From now on, drill and drain. Huh? Choose one flower, drill into it, and drain every last drop of fluid. They could at least not intend intentionally try to make everything sound super gross. Drill into it and drain every last drop of fluid? I don't know what it is about the word fluid at the end of this sentence, but it makes everything sound super gross. But do it! That feeling when you drill into it and drain every last drop of fluid. If you've ever seen the B movie, you know that a big part of it is like the social and environmental commentary that it makes about humans. Plan B tries to replicate that, but never really like elaborates on it or like goes deep enough for you to be able to tell what point they're trying to make. What are you guys doing? Ever hear of drill and drain? Yeah, it sounds like some nutty technique humans invented. <laughs> yeah, you know us humans, always drilling and draining every last drop of fluid. Care to elaborate on why that could be bad? <laughs> humans. No? And you're not gonna mention it for the rest of the movie? Okay. <laughs> yeah, humans, good one. But as you might expect, the drilling and draining method doesn't go so well. Pretty soon they run out of usable flowers because they've drained every last drop of fluid from all of them. And they have to resort to going and draining flowers from this George Washington memorial. The bees live in Washington, DC. I haven't mentioned that. I don't know why that's an important part of the movie, but it is. Drill and drain, hurry. <laughs> Zips. These bees are so fucking dumb. They're like, all right, time to pollinate the flower. Wait, which part's the flower again? Disturbing, a floral tribute to George Washington. Why does this bee have so much respect for George Washington? This bee was born, what, probably less than half a year ago? And George Washington died in 1799? Also, He's a bee? We have no choice. We do have a choice. Like Washington, you know? He could have been king, but he chose democracy. Why does he know so much about George Washington? <laughs> do they learn human history in bee school? Why would a bee know anything about George Washington? So the main antagonist of the movie is the queen, but there's also this sort of like side antagonist named Belzar. Belzar! He's always like sucking up to the queen, kissing her ass, and trying to make the other bees look bad. Like this scene where he, I guess, agitates this random toad to make it attack all of the bees who are working on the George Washington memorial. <laughs> And in the next scene, when they all bring back their nectar to see how much they got that day, they vomit all the nectar into the bowl, they shake their little asses in it, and then they're all just kind of standing around waiting. The queen is standing right there, everybody's just standing doing nothing. Belzar just floats from his bowl over to the other bowl, sticks out his giant creepy tongue, and slurps up some of their honey. Belzar stole my honey! Me? No, you stole my honey! Did not! Did too! Silence! The contest winner is Belza. How did the queen not notice that? She's literally standing right there. How did anyone else not see him do that? It's not like they were all distracted doing something. They were just standing around. How did they not see him stick out his giant ass tongue and drain every last drop of fluid? Aha. Belza did appear to take a bit. Oh, okay, someone did see. This old ass bee in the background who we've never seen or heard from before. Well, at least he saw, but the queen doesn't give a shit. Silence! Being lost. Banish him. Well, yes, I certainly could. But then I'll have less honey. Look at it. Glistening. Pure. Gold. 
I want more. Look, I'm just gonna say it. This queen is too into honey. I get that she's a bee and bees love honey, but I feel like even just talking about honey, even just thinking about it is turning her on. I'm not about it. I'm just not. Anyway, Belzar gets promoted by the queen because he's a little suck up bitch boy and now he's basically her right hand man. So Belzar uses his new power to wake up the other worker bees in the middle of the night and tell them they gotta go get some honey. It's time to learn the meaning of work, of dedication, of loyalty. We just got to bed. Whoa, what? Who the fuck is that? Where did this character come from? We're halfway into the movie and they just introduced this character with the most crazy ass voice I've ever heard. You can't expect me to be on board with that. We just got to bed. Sleep privileges are canceled. Starting now, you work 24 seven making honey and expanding the hive. Does anyone else think this is weird? I feel like I'm having a fever dream right now. Where the fuck did this character come from? That's never spoken a peep and now all of a sudden they're sticking up for themselves with the most obnoxious voice in the world. We just got to bed! Let us go back to sleep! He's just, he's just tired, Belza. It's Major Belza, Captain. Wow, I really gotta hand it to him with the animation on this. I mean, the emotion they're able to capture in their facial expressions is just amazing. I mean, I don't really know what this emotion is. I guess it's supposed to be like concerned or angry because he's, he's having to go out in the middle of the night to get honey, but he kind of just looks high. Get to work right now! Aw, oh, man! So Belzar and the queen pretty much work the bees to exhaustion. They're expanding the hive. The hive is getting gigantic, but they're running out of steam fast. Joey, Zips, wake up! Huh? I'm so tired! Mm-hmm, yeah. Nice. You know how when you're so tired you can barely keep your eyes open and someone wakes you up and you go ah, ah, I'm so tired! Yeah, that makes sense. We haven't been to bed in days. You're kidding. So you come here. To the Lincoln Memorial. Yep. A monument dedicated to Abraham Lincoln. The president who ended slavery. And here we are busting our behinds before dawn without so much as a thank you. Like slaves, and I get the irony. So do all bees just have like an in-depth understanding of American history? I get that it's a cartoon, and real bees obviously don't know jack shit about the presidents. It just feels so weird that this movie is focused on showing us that bees are so fascinated by human presidents and not like past bee rulers. Like, shouldn't that be who they look up to? It's also weird because like the idea of, of a president in a democracy isn't even compatible with like bees biologically because like the queen bee is just born into power automatically there's no votes in a beehive there's one point in the movie where all the bees are worried about who's going to churn the honey because pistol who's the one person who knew how to do it got fucking destroyed by that toad earlier and they're all worried because nobody else knows how to do it and it seems like a really difficult task but here's the thing from what they show in the movie all churning the honey is is just like floating over it and shaking your little ass in it like, it couldn't be more simple. Luckily, Bing's love interest, who's a bee from another hive, knows how to do it, and she teaches them all how to do it. It's all in the swivel. It's just kind of impressive that even though the bees, you know, do things like trying to pollinate pretzels and are constantly banging their heads on shit that aren't flowers, and they can't even figure out how to shake their little butts in honey, they all seem to have an extensive knowledge of human U.S. history. Who's this? <laughs> That's Bonnie. Hmm. <laughs> I don't like her. Huh? I'm hungry. Feed me a pre-breakfast snack. What? That was kind of weird. They just like glossed over that completely. Was that supposed to go anywhere? Who's that? I don't like her. I'm hungry. You know, Bing, when I was young, Mummy said I would never be queen. She said I was too nice, but I toughened up, didn't I? Uh-huh. No one thinks I'm too nice now, mummy! Uh-uh. One of the things I love about this movie is how one-dimensional every character is. You got the main character who's just standard good guy, the love interest is just classic nice girl. You got a fat bee who's constantly eating flowers and garbage. And then you have the villain, 
who, when she finally reveals her main motivation for being evil, it's just that her mom said she was too nice once, and so she decided she was gonna be evil forever, so that nobody would think she was too nice anymore. No one thinks I'm too nice now, mommy! Things really start to heat up towards the end. Bing gets overworked to the point where I think he goes insane. Where's the honey? I don't have any and I don't care! Like, actually lost his mind, traumatized beyond the point of return. Bye bye, Bing. Bye bye, Bing. Bye. He goes insane. He tries to stand up to the queen, but just gets banished from the hive. Get out! Before it's too late. Bye bye. That shot definitely feels like it lingers for a little bit too long. Like, Bing flies away and all of the guard bees are still inching closer towards where he was. Like, they're just gonna keep getting closer and closer until they all meet in the middle and kiss. Eventually, Bing figures out that the old queen was banished because she tried to poison the elders, but Bing realizes that she was actually framed by the new queen. So Bing comes back to the hive and explains to everybody what the queen did. I can't poison the elders! No! But the queen's not gonna give up that easily. She didn't work her whole life being evil just to give up in this one moment when she could easily just lie to get out of it. Okay, fine. So I tried to bump off a few old bees. So what? Oh, she is? She's just gonna admit to it right away? Oh. Unsheath your stingers. Uh-oh. Joey, Zeps, and Buffy, get ready! Then we get this big fight scene between the worker bees and the guards, which is just... bad. <laughs> Not so fast! The weirdest thing about this scene is it doesn't even look or sound like any of the bees are actually hitting each other. Everyone is just missing each other, so it's just like 10 bees all humping the air and grunting for like two minutes. <laughs> Why is no one making contact? This fight is gonna take forever. <laughs> the ending, I gotta say, is not very satisfying. They defeat all the queen's guard bees and the old queen comes back and she's like, your reign of terror is over. And then without saying or doing anything, the queen just floats away. She's just like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Bye bye But she does turn around right before she's about to leave for just long enough to hint at a sequel. I shall return to reclaim my throne, and next time I won't be so nice. Next time! Yeah, her! Next time! <laughs> and that's the end. The day is saved. Long live the queen. Long live the queen. I hope you guys enjoyed this in-depth look at the worst movie ever, but now it's time to talk about our sponsor, Brawl Stars. Brawl Stars is a fun and exciting action-packed mobile game from the creators of Clash of Clans, with a variety of gameplay modes including battle royale, boss battles, soccer, and 3v3 squad battles. As you level up, there's a bunch of different fighters or brawlers as they're called in the game that you can unlock, and each of them have different moves and attributes. You can do matchmaking so you can play with random strangers online and never run out of people to play with, but you can also set up private games so you can play with your friends. It's a really fun game and it's really cute. I really like games with animation styles like this. It's very pretty, very visually aesthetically pleasing. You guys know I have a complicated relationship with mobile game ads. Most of them are trash. Which is why when Brawl Stars reached out to sponsor this video, I had to accept. I had to prove that making a good ad for a mobile game wasn't hard. We don't have to lie and say things like this game will make you legally skilled even though it might. So here's some concepts I came up with for some good ads for Brawl Stars. Only kids born after 1920 will get this game. Now I think we can all agree that while not everyone born after 1920 will get this game, you at least have to have an understanding of electricity's existence and phones to understand this game. So I think being born after 1920 is a good place to start. This game is legally legal. There's nothing illegal about this game. <laughs> nothing at all. This. This one is more of a proof of concept. I actually, I'm not sure about this one. Colt just shot you and took all your gems. Shoot him or divorce? Or, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Um, how about shoot him or go collect some more gems? Go on to win the game and unlock another one of Brawl Stars' fun and zany characters. Yeah, that's better. This is one of the apps on my phone. Guys, 
I'm not Selena Gomez, and this isn't the only app on my phone, but it is one of the apps on my phone, and I do play it quite frequently. Thank you to Brawl Stars for sponsoring this video, and thank you to you guys for checking out Brawl Stars. I know I say this a lot, but when you guys check out the people who sponsor these videos, it helps me out a lot. It makes it a lot easier for me to get sponsors in the future, so thank you. All right, Greg, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Just a couple of quick announcements. A lot of people have been asking for my outro song to be put up on Spotify. It actually is, so you don't have to ask anymore. It just is on Spotify. It's on Apple Music and iTunes and any other streaming or music service that you would probably use. So go check it out. And if you want to listen to it, even when the video's not over, you can do that. Thank you, I'm Greg now for turning on my notifications. You are truly Greg. I'll see you guys next time with a really interesting video where I grow three feet. Not taller. I grow three extra feet. Bye. This video is over now. Yeah. Over now. Go find something else to watch Or just watch this video again. I know we had a lot of fun yeah. A lot of fun Woo. But you can't stay on this end screen forever no. This video is over now yeah. Over now So why are you still watching this? Do you not have